Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. And if you're not a mother, you have one. Um, it's really interesting when Pastor Garrett asked me to uh, speak today. Of course, I went and thought about it, and I'm like, okay, give me a day. I need to pray about this. I don't know. I'm hoping, and I'm like, no, you don't do that. But here I am. I said yes. And so as I was praying and trying to ask God what it is that he had today, I'm like, okay, it's going to be Mother's Day. What kind of message do you have? Trying to go through what we can say about mothers that hasn't already been said a million times. And the message I got today actually is not specific to mothers. So I'm kind of excited about that because every single person here, I pray, is going to receive something today. So when I was first, when I was first praying and asking God what it is that he had to say, you have to appreciate the humor that the Holy Spirit has. So what I got was this message is brought to you by the letter R. And I'm like, isn't that Sesame Street? And I looked it up, of course it was. And I, after I got done giggling about it, I'm like, okay, God, what are you trying to say about this? And of course I started receiving a couple words and of course they started with the letter R. But, you know, there's the opportunity to dig deeper. And so I asked God, what is it about the letter R? What is it that you're trying to say? And so in Hebrew, I remember that every letter has a meaning behind it. And so I looked up the letter R, and I came up with the letter R is, has a pictograph in the ancient Hebrew, which is the head of a man. And the meaning behind it means head, first, top, or beginning. The head of a person controls the whole body. It's where everything starts. It starts with our thoughts. Our thoughts that come in is what controls our body. It controls the actions that we do, the decisions that we make. It's where everything starts. So I thought that was really interesting because it goes right along, of course, with what he was giving me. And so I want to really take a minute to say, Lord, open our minds. Lord, let us receive what it is that you have for us today. Open our minds and open our hearts to hear the words that you're going to speak to us. Lord, let us bring, to those, bring those thoughts to our minds that we need to know and remember and deal with today as we go through this message. And we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. So, you know, this is where seeds start. There's a reason why he says, take every thought captive, because this is where it starts. It can be planted into your hearts as good or bad. When we let those good things come in, his word, what he says, his promises, it gives us strength, it gives us peace. But when we let those other things get planted into our hearts, it causes confusion. It brings chaos and anger and sadness. And those are the things that we don't want. So the thing that he was leading me to, which I kind of, again, had to giggle again, because how many of you are here and heard the message that um, Pastor Garrett was preaching about full space about the spa day? How many heard that? So remember he was saying that he was just looking for a 10-step process of how to enjoy it. Well, guess what? This is a seven-step process. So this is just for you. Not really. It's for all of us. Um, so he gave me the seven steps to redemption. So we know that redemption is what he did for us on the cross. But I really want to look at the specific definitions because there's a couple words here that we're going to focus on. So redemption is the action of saving or being saved from sin error, or evil. He makes our path straight when we err, right? The action of regaining possession of something in exchange for payment or clearing of a debt. The action of buying one's freedom. So today, this is really seven steps to freedom, and that's what we're going to focus on today. And this can only happen through Jesus. So again, knowing and seeking more I looked at seven steps to redemption. So what is seven? If we look at one of the meanings of seven in the Bible, it means perfection, completion, and wholeness. 
When we get seven steps to freedom, it helps make us whole because that's what his plan for us is, to make us better, to always give us freedom and wholeness and peace. So let's look at some fun things with number seven. There are seven days in a week on the seventh day God rested. In Joshua, the Israelites and him marched around the walls of Jericho for seven days, and they had seven priests holding seven trumpets made of ram's horns, and on the seventh day they circled seven times when the walls collapsed. That was a completion of God's word and his promise to Joshua. In 2 Kings, Elijah sent Naaman with leprosy to wash himself in the Jordan River seven times. He said, and your flesh will be restored to you and you will be cleansed. Now at first Naaman argued with Elijah because he wanted him to just lay hands on him and say, you're healed and be healed like that. He didn't want to take that action and go through the process. He wanted it instantly. And how much does that speak to us that how many times do we want instant healing, instant fix. That's what our world and our culture says today is we should have it now. But when we know what God's purpose and God's plan is, we need to take action and follow the instructions he's giving to us. And then we can be clean and restored and whole. In Psalms 12, 6, it says, words of the Lord are like gold refined seven times. We need to process his word and let it really set inside of us and refine itself inside of us and let it refine us. Elijah sent his servant to look for rain seven times before the small cloud appeared. Out of this, we get do not give up. When we don't see the results right away, when we are pressing and asking God for that wholeness, for that freedom, and we don't see it in an instant, we cannot give up. We have to keep going and keep going until we see that promise fulfilled. So this leads me to, again, when, you know, numbers come, it's another way that God speaks to you. Obviously, we're looking at the Bible, but let me take you to a scripture. Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And that's going to really be the focus for today because, you know, God asks us to do a few things. He said, ask me, seek me, and follow me. And so that's what we're really going to be thinking about today. We're going to really be pressing in to ask God, and we're going to seek God, and the door is going to be open to us. And I'll go into that a little bit later. But he says it's the glory of of God to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings to search a matter out. The things that he speaks to us is an invitation to go deeper. It's an invitation for us to seek him and really see what it is that he's speaking. I could have taken the message and been completely fine, but it's seeking into that, what do you mean by number seven? What do you mean by the letter R? And of course, it goes along with everything he's saying, but it takes you a step further. It takes you a step deeper. So when we ask, when we seek him out, he'll take us further. He'll take us deeper if we're willing to take that step and ask him. So let's get into the seven steps. The first step is rest. Starting off good, right? Who wants to rest today? Mothers. Um, so number one rest is stop and slow down. Just as Pastor Garrett's been talking to us about the soul space that we need to take time to rest, this is where we need to really focus and really rest because he's showing us that there's always something we need to do, but he should be our priority. Just like the story of Martha and Mary, it's actually Martha that invited Jesus into the house, but then she got so occupied doing the things that she thought needed to be done. She wanted to honor him. She wanted to fix him a great meal, and that has to be done. But she forgot the priority of the reason he came is to really visit with her. If we invite people over to our house, we're not going to invite them in and go busy doing stuff and say, I'm sorry, I want to give this to you, but I just have to do all this stuff first. No, you go over to somebody's house 
to visit with them and talk with them. And so that's where this rest is so important that we have to stop and visit with God because he wants to talk to us. In Genesis 2, 2, it says God rested from all the work he had done. It's that important. So number two is relax. Okay, we got our R and R's. Rest and relax. All the mothers are saying, I'm good. We're done. Let's go. Uh, Relax. God is in control. That's what he's saying about this, that we don't have to do it in ourselves. We have to trust in his abilities. And it's his timing, it's his way, and it's his power. And this is what it's so easy to forget because we have our own ideas of the way that we want things to happen. We have our own ideas of when it should happen, how it should happen. And when we surrender to him, we allow him to have control. That's when he can work and actually do what it is that he wants us to do. And we can't do that until we completely surrender to him. And it's a reminder through, there's a couple verses. I mean, Zechariah, we know, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And that's one thing that we have to constantly repeat to ourselves, that it's not my power, that it is all up to you, God. I surrender to you. And in Exodus 14, 14, it says, The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. Gosh, there's that rest and relax and just stop again and letting him do what it is that he does. So number three, we're going to go into recognize. And we're going to spend a minute on this because we need to recognize when he's speaking to us. We need to recognize what it is that he's saying. We need to recognize what is good and what is bad. What do we need to keep and what do we need to throw away? We make decisions every day on what we keep and what we throw away when it comes to our house. We have papers, we have stuff. We're not going to hold on to all this broken stuff or all this trash papers, all the junk mail that we get, because what would our houses look like? They would look like hoarder's houses, right? They would be piled up of stuff that we don't need that was trash, that was broken, that was dirty, along with the good. But we're doing the same things to our temple, our body. We're holding on to things that we should be getting rid of. We need to consider what it is that God's saying we need to get rid of. Whether it's a hurt, whether it's bitterness, anger, whether it's offense, whether it's something against ourselves that we feel unworthy or unwanted. Those are things that God did not mean for us to hold on to. He means for us to let go of that because that is not what he intended for us. That is not what he speaks over us. He speaks peace. He speaks refreshing and freedom to us. So we need to recognize what it is that he's saying, and we need to recognize what it is that we need to get rid of. This is also an area that we like to deflect. We like to say, it's not me, it's them. We like to say that it's not our problem, it's somebody else's. If I, if they wouldn't have done this, then I wouldn't feel like this. If they wouldn't say that, then I wouldn't feel this way. But we know that it's still up to us of whether we receive and hold on to those words or actions or whether we let them go. Because no matter what somebody else says about us or against us, God says something different and we know different. And we have to have the wisdom to recognize, is God speaking to you from that person? Is there something that you do need to change? You can't live life saying, I don't agree with you. I don't care. I'm doing it my way because I know my way is the best. Because we know that's not right either. But through that wisdom that God provides, he'll show us what it is that we need to change, that we need to accept, that we need to ignore and let go. So this recognition comes through the wisdom of God. 
So again, ask him and seek him, and he'll show us. Number four is repent or release. You know, we talk so much about repentance, about our sins, and yes, we have so many sins that we go through every day. If we recognize, we need to stop and repent. How many people know somebody who never says they're sorry, who never apologizes for that thing that they've done wrong or that thing that they've said, and how bad that makes us feel? We don't want to be that person to God. We need to take the time and say, God, I am sorry. I repent, and I want to do better. I want to change. Help me change. Our freedom is bought and paid for by him. So we need to repent sometimes of how we handle the situation. It's not always something that we've done. Sometimes it's just how we've reacted to those things that have been wrong to us. We're forever trying to handle our things in our own power. We want to argue and defend ourselves. We want to defend our position. And sometimes that defense, we need to drop and just be at peace and say, God, it's up to you. You're in control, and he is our defender. And it's not always a sin. Sometimes we just need to release. And usually that goes along with releasing forgiveness. It's easy when all those things come in, we hold them up. We keep those hurts, the bitterness, or anger at somebody. And those things grow roots, and they affect every area of our life. That affects every relationship we have with every person we come in contact with. From one person from one word or sentence it affects our entire life so when we release them to God he can take that away and it will change literally your entire life it will change your thought process it will change your decision process one other thing um Anger and resentment towards God. This is one thing that can prevent us from receiving freedom for ourselves. You say, well, I'm not angry at God, but are you? How many times do we feel resentment or anger or even just mad that things didn't happen the way that we wanted them to? When a loved one or somebody we know is sick and we believe that God can heal because he absolutely can, But we have no idea what his ways or his thoughts are. We don't know why it happens to some and not others. But we know that God is in control and he has a plan and a purpose and he works things out for our good. So sometimes we need to recognize if we are holding on to any anger or resentment against God. And if we are, we need to repent and let it go and really know that he is for us. Number five is receive. We have to be willing to receive our forgiveness and freedom and not reject it. Now this is a really interesting step because when we talk about receive, that is hard for some people. That was hard for me. We think if somebody comes up to give you $20, you're like, yeah, I'll take it. But what if that 20 becomes 2,000, or a car, or a house, or any materialistic thing, do we say, no, that's not, that's too much, I can't accept that, or are we going to receive what it is that God's trying to give to us? He is trying to give us freedom, and that's a little bit different. Sometimes that's hard to accept. When I was praying and seeking God, I had this image in my head of a prison cell and there was a lady in the back corner sitting on the floor and yet the prison door was open she just wasn't willing to walk through and that represents all of us sometimes are we willing to receive that freedom that God is giving us when we let something go when he forgives us 
do we ourselves hold on to that of knowing what we did in the past, of knowing what we said in the past, or do we forgive ourselves and get up and walk out of that cell? If we hold on to that, not only does it keep us in our prison, but it gives us, it gives the enemy tools to use against us. It's like saying, here, keep me here. I'm okay being here. We're comfortable being locked up. It can cause condemnation and lies, feelings like we're not good enough, that you can't do it, that you're broken and that you cannot be healed. And those are absolutely not what God intended. They turn those lies into weights and oppression. They become a prison cell for us. And they hold us down instead of giving us the freedom and helping us to walk out what God intended us for to have. Again, going back to the prison cell, it keeps us in there. That is what keeps us in there. When we are willing to accept, say, okay, he is on the other side of that with his hand out, are we going to accept that invitation to walk out? Number six is restoration and recovery. God gives us a new outlook on life. He gives us a new perspective. Relationships are restored. This is what we had becomes better than before. This is where God is able to give us that freedom. Just like we were singing graves into gardens, he gives us the beauty for the ashes. He gives us the joy for the sorrow that we had. He turns our praise Okay, this is that restoration, that recovery. He makes it better than it was. He blesses us. We traded in the bad, and now we're receiving the good in place of it. In 2 Corinthians, it says, Anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. This is that restoration process. It's becoming new. It's transforming our mind. It, again, changes our entire life. The way that we see the world, the way that we see people, we can now trust people when we had a hard time trusting before. We can now hold on to joy instead of seeing people as they're going to hurt us. It releases that. It helps us make decisions living out the path that God had put there for us. And we have so much grace for others to go through the process, but we forgot to give ourselves that same grace. So have patience when going through this process. Don't give up and continue to seek him. And acknowledge that sometimes you're going through hurts because God is healing you. And it's okay to have bad days. It's okay to feel angry, but don't hold on to it. Give yourself grace, but give it to God. And number seven is repeat. Because we are never done. We have to do this over and over and over again. God is constantly pushing us to become better. He wants us to be better, to influence others, to speak life into others, to help others. And we can only help others when we help ourselves. Because if we have a bad outlook on life, what are we gonna pass on to others? If we're holding on to those hurts, what are we gonna give to others. We need to give those things to God so that he can replace them with love so we can give love back out. We need to see faith because that way we can give faith back out. So the change in us ultimately impacts everybody around us. That's why he wants us to go through this process to become whole. Because when we say, I surrender, use me, 
have, there's only a limited amount of ways that he can use you if you're not willing to change. You can use me, but only this way, only saying this, only doing this. I can't do that because I'm not comfortable with that. He pushes us outside our comfort zone, trust me on that, that we have to do these things to help grow. Again, and our growth is to help others grow. It's always about us, but it's never just about us. So that is the process. Um, Jesus did this through the crucifixion. And right now, some of us have not received God as Lord of our life. We have not taken that moment. We don't know him. And in order to go through this process, it can only happen through him. Again, like we were saying, he came he died for us, and he rose again so that our sins can be covered, so that he will keep our path straight. And thank God that he did that. Thank God that Jesus was here. And thank God that Jesus was here and knows the struggles that we have. He knows the hurts and the pain that we have, that we've experienced. And so he knows how to love us through that. He knows how to help us through that. So I don't know if there's anybody here who has not, or online, who has not received Jesus, but I want to take a minute just to pray. If you're ready to make that commitment today, we're going to say a prayer today, and I would invite you to do that because heaven celebrates every single person that comes the kingdom and we will completely celebrate with you and you will be family so I'm just going to ask that everybody bow their heads and say this prayer with me and we'll say it together so there doesn't have to be you don't have to be all alone because you're not going to be all alone you're going to be family so thank you God that you are a good father let's say this together you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, to the earth. I believe that he came, died on the cross, and rose again. The sacrifice he made allows my sins to be forgiven. And my freedom is paid for. I surrender my life to you today, and I ask you to take control. I say this day, I will follow you. I acknowledge you will be Lord of my life. I thank you for bringing your kingdom in your family, and I can rejoice with my brothers and sisters. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you just said that prayer for the first time or renewed, I want you to meet up. There are some people that will be available for prayer later. Or just take one of those cards um, that will be in the back of the seat or just drop it in the offering and give your name and your information so that we can get in contact with you and celebrate with you. Because you are celebrated. You are welcome here, and we rejoice with you. So what I want to do now is um, there's an important aspect to our thoughts. We see this entire message has to do with our thinking, and it starts with our thoughts. So what I'm going to have people do in a couple minutes is stand up, and we are actually going to step out. From where we are we're gonna step out of our cells or prisons that we're kept in because why do we do this it may sound silly but again there's an aspect into our thoughts when somebody comes into the hospital with thoughts of committing suicide they sign a contract saying that they won't act on it that they won't actually go through with it and it's not legal and binding 
but there is a thought process that is activated with that promise saying that I won't do it. And the majority of people will actually honor that and not go through with it. That is how strong our thoughts are. So today, as an act, we're going to all stand inside, outside, at home, wherever you're at. I'm going to have you envision that prison cell that God showed me, and we are no longer going to stay where we're at. Every person here today or online or outside, I want you to make that act and that thought and say, I am going to be free today. And so we're going to stand. I'm going to have everybody stand. <laughs> and I want to see every single person move today. I don't want anybody to stay where they're at. I want you to take a couple minutes and just pray and seek God and see if there's something that comes up. Is there something that he's showing you that's holding you back? Is there a thought process there that needs to be changed? Tim, if you want to come back to the worship team. Um, is there anything that you need to change, let go of, that you need to bring into your life? Is there something that he's speaking to you, a word about your life that you need to plant? And is there anything in there that you need to get rid of? So let's take a couple minutes to ask God, what inside me are you trying to say? Are you trying to change? Do I need to give up? Do I need to walk out of? So everybody, let's just take a couple minutes and they'll just go ahead and play. Um, just some quiet background music. Um, but I really want you to press into God because he speaks when you ask and you seek. So Lord, help reveal what it is that we need to change today. Reveal what it is in our minds that are holding us captive, Lord. I pray that every person will have something that they see that they need to change, get rid of, or accept today. Speak words to people that they need to hear that they can plant in their heart that is a truth that you say about them. And I pray that every person will receive something that will change their life today, that they can get rid of. Lord, I thank you for everything that you do for us. I thank you for wanting to give us that freedom, and I pray that we will receive it from you today. All right, let's just take a couple minutes.